In this video, I'm going to show you the basic capnometry application of the MindBody Training Tools biofeedback software. So we're obviously working with a capnometer, which is a device that measures carbon dioxide. And just to summarize, it's the best way of detecting overbreathing or the degree of overbreathing. And training with a capnometer is, is a way of optimizing oxygen delivery to brain cells. So very powerful biofeedback parameter. Okay, so here we go. We'll start as usual with the platform application. So I've just started that up. Now, we start on the setup tab. I'll just mention briefly the device setup. So I've clicked the device setup button and I get this dialogue. You've seen this before, but there's essentially, there's it's a way of selecting the device that you're using for each biofeedback parameter that you can work with in the software. In this application, we're interested in the capnometer. So it's this selection here. Now, if you've got a, a rental device from me, or if you've bought a device from, from York Biofeedback, then it's a Respironics compatible device. So you would select that. Now, for the purposes of the this video, the, the, which I'm just demonstrating the software, I'm gonna go with simulator. So I'm not gonna change that right now. But when you're doing real biofeedback, you would select Respironics compatible on that setting there, so that one. Okay, so I'll click okay there. Now, to start the application, there's a there's a tab or a button on the left here that, that takes you to the, the capnometry set of applications. Now, you see here that there's a, you've got three columns of buttons, yeah? So that's one column for each of three applications that work with capnometry. Today I'm going to be showing you the basic capnometry, which is this first column. But you've also got an application that combines both capnometry and EMG for muscle tension. And then another one that combines capnometry and heart rate variability. Now we haven't covered heart rate variability yet in the course, so I'm not going to say anything about that in this module, but I will touch on it on in module five, which is on HRV. You've also got a user guide, a link to a user guide. That's gonna be useful as well as a sort of reference if you need it. I'm gonna say something more about device setup because when you first connect the capnometer to the computer via USB, something happens in the software. I'm gonna show you something about that. So if I go to the device manager of Windows, which I can do, this is Windows 10. If I right click on the start button and then click control panel. Okay, this is the control panel. And then I'm gonna search for the device manager. There it is there. Okay, so this is the device manager. You've probably seen it before. Essentially, it's a list of all the different hardware uh, components of your computer. Now, when I connect the capnometer, something will happen here. It will show up on this list. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, so something has appeared. It's, it's here. It's under this section called ports, common LPT. And there it is. That device is the capnometer. It's called Silicon Lab CP210X USB to UART bridge, and then in brackets COM3. So I need to say a couple of things about this. The first thing is that the first time that you connect the capnometer, it will need to, Windows will need to find a driver for the device. So you won't immediately see that, but you won't immediately see this um, representation here until it's found the driver, but Windows should be able to load the driver automatically. Now, if it doesn't for any reason, I've put a copy of the driver files onto the dongle. So if you've rented a device from me, you've got the the software dongle, the USB dongle, which is the which is like a memory stick. There's there there are driver files for the device on there if you need them. But as I say, Windows should find that automatically. So yeah, so what else? So yeah, when I connect the uh capnometer subsequently this this should appear what it is it's a it's a virtual serial port 
So let me let me say what, what that means. A serial port is an old port that used to be on computers and now you, you don't generally see them because they've been su superseded by USB ports. But it used to be a physical port on the back of a computer called a serial port or a COM port. Now what the capnometer does is it causes Windows to create a virtual or a software version of the COM port. Now don't worry about that if that sounds like uh, a little too technical for you. Um, the only thing that you might need to remember about this is the number of the COM port here. Yeah, but you probably don't even need to do that. I'm just showing you this just for completeness. You probably don't need to worry at all. So now let's go back to the platform program. I'm just going to check my device setup. I have the Capnometer Respironix compatible set here. I'm going to go to the Capnometry tab and I'm going to start the basic application. Okay, so here we are. What I want to point out here is that in the top right corner, we've got a few things. The first thing is uh, an, uh, an LED, uh, it's a lamp that will light, it will turn from red to green when you press play, assuming that the capnometer is connected and is working. I'm not going to do that now. I just want to show you this button here. It's, it's labeled capnometer. I can click that button and I get a dialog comes up. Now this dialog has some options associated with the hardware. Now the only one that's relevant is the port setting here. So you can see that it's set to COM3, which is the one that I had when I connected the capnometer. So I know that is the capnometer. And in fact, I only have one COM port on my computer right now. So there's, so there's really no choice at all. So I didn't even need to open this dialog. And you probably don't either, uh, assuming there's, there's only one uh, device connected on, on your system. Now, later on, when I talk about HRV and capnometry application, it's possible that there could be more than one. So, so then it becomes relevant. So, but I'll, I'll defer the discussion of that till later. Everything else, all these other options, you don't need to change. You should just leave those set to the defaults. And, and yeah, that's that. Okay, let's start the basic capnometry application again. So we start with the platform. I'm going to, Go to device setup and I'm going to run in in simulator mode just for the sake of the demonstration. So click OK there. So that was device setup on the setup tab. Now go back to the capnometry tab and click this button to start the basic application. Yes, we're going to run in simulator mode. And it starts bio era and here we are. So to start the data flow, I've got the play button in the corner here. Now at this point, if I had the real device connected, I would get the indicator, the colored indicator would turn from red to green. I'm using simulator, so I don't see that. Okay, so this is the application interface. So we've got essentially two main displays. We've got this one at the top half of the screen. It's a short term display of essentially what you might consider the raw signal from the capnometer. Here it is, it's a sequence of peaks and then the other main display is the long-term one. So the long-term display dis shows us two derived parameters from this signal. So let me just explain a bit more about the capnometry signal. As I say, it's a sequence of peaks, once one peak per breath. So the peak comes at the end of the breath and it's the carbon dioxide that's being measured. So the, so the carbon dioxide is exhaled so at the end of the exhalation we get a peak of the carbon dioxide now the most important parameter within that is the height of the peak because that's known to correlate with the level in the blood as i've explained in the in the earlier video in the in the course so that's that's the most important measurement is that is the peak of the of the uh signal there per breath that's called the end tidal carbon dioxide now that parameter is calculated for each breath and it's shown in the long-term display as the green trace here. So you can see it starts off on this scale about 38, rising up to just above 40, 42.
The other parameter we have in the long-term display is the breathing rate. So that's shown in blue. So obviously I can work out the breathing rate because I've got one peak for, it, for every breath. So the breathing rate is effectively derived from the distance between peaks. So that's, that's essentially all there is in the, in the basic capnometry applications, breathing rate and end tidal carbon dioxide. Uh, those numbers are reflected in numeric displays here. So there's, that's the peak carbon dioxide and then the average of that, then the current breathing rate and then the average breathing rate, the averages are both over one minute. Now the rest of the uh, displays, the charts in the display, these two uh, here and here are to do with thresholds, which I'll cover in a later video on audio feedback. You can, of course, adjust the charts if you, if you need to. Let's start with the short term display. Now, the scale here, the vertical scale, we have 0 to 50. This is in the units of measurement for the carbon dioxide measurement. It's actually technically uh, a pressure. Don't worry about the details of that if that sounds confusing. But the, the units are actually millimeters of mercury. Again, that's not an important detail. All that you really need to know is that anything above 35, 35 to 40, that's the normal sort of range. And then 40 and above is optimal breathing. Anything below 35 could be considered a degree of overbreathing, and obviously the lower the peaks are, the more significant the overbreathing, the more sig significant the problem. Now you can't actually change that scale um, because there's no need to. It's it's fixed at 0 to 50. Yeah, you can if you want change the position of the dotted line by uh, dragging this little bar here. But again, there's generally no need to do that. Uh, but there is a control to change the time scale and it's here. It's a combo box control. It's currently set at 90 seconds. That's the default. You can change it to, to either more or less if you want. I'm going to leave it just set the same, but it's there. Okay, let's move on and talk about the long term display because this is a little more complicated. So what we have is, again, the two parameters, the breathing rate and the end tidal or the peak carbon dioxide and they've each got their own scale. Now at the moment the scale that's showing it's 30 to 50 and that's in the units of the carbon dioxide measure. So the same unit as this um, and I can change that that range from 30 to 50 to something else using this control. So another combo box control so it's long-term range uh, end tidal or peak CO2. You can set it to something else if you want. I'm not going to change it right now, um, but you can do that. Now, the breathing rate, there's there's an equivalent range for that. It's not shown at the moment, but I can show it by clicking on the blue sort of little button there. Hope you can see that. So I can click on any, either of these. This is a general feature of the long-term displays throughout the applications in the suite that you can click on these colored buttons to change the scale. So now I have 0 to 30 and that is in breaths per minute. So that's the breathing rate scale. So you can see that what's happened in the session that's that's recorded in the simulator is that the breathing started off fast, slowed right down to something like about six breaths per minute. And at that time, the peak carbon dioxide went up, which is good. And then the breathing rate speeded up and then slowed down again. And the end tidal carbon dioxide, the peak carbon dioxide has gone the opposite way. So that just gives you an indication that it's easier to breathe well and get good peak CO2 when you're breathing slowly. But it's not impossible to, to have both a fast breathing rate and a, and a good peak CO2. Okay, so yeah, I can change the, the, the breathing rate scale using this control, yet another combo box control. So at the moment it's set 0 to 30, which is quite a wide range. If you want a more sensitivity, you can set it to something like 15 or even less. I'm going to set it back to 30 so I get the whole thing. But yeah, that's, that's the breathing rate vertical scale. 
Now I can also change the time scale or the horizontal scale of the long-term graph using another control. It's a combo box again, currently set at 10 minutes. I can increase that if, if, you want, if, if I want to do longer sessions or even drop it down to five minutes. So that's an option there as well. Now, the rest of the controls in the software are generally to do with audio feedback. So they're, so they're either to do with the thresholds, which, which, of which there are two here on the left and another one on the right, uh, or, or other forms of audio feedback, namely MIDI. Uh, and the, these controls at the bottom are to do with that. Um, this control and this control, that's con they're connected with the uh, thresholds. So I'll cover those, the, all the audio feedback controls in a later video. The last thing I want to show you is the, uh, the report functionality for the basic capnometry application. So here we are again, we're in the platform program. We're on the capnometry tab. And this column of buttons is for the basic capnometry application. And the second one down opens a session report. So if you've just run a biofeedback session and you want to have an overview of that session, then you can open a report by clicking this button. So I'll do that now. First thing I get is a dialogue offering me to select a session. So the software automatically names each session, giving it a number and a date that, for the session. So I'm just going to pick, pick one, click OK. And now I get another dialogue this time for report options. So it's much the same as what we've seen before with other applications in the suite. So for example, the first two at the top, this one, overwrite existing report. You need to do that if you decide to change the uh, report options. So if you create one report and then decide to adjust the options, then you need to check that the second time in order to create a new report. Otherwise, the software will just open the existing report and it'll ignore the, the settings that you changed. So that's what that's about. You can add notes to your session report and those will be saved with the, with the session report, uh, even if you later overwrite the report, by the way. So, so notes are always saved. Um, yes, I've got some options to do with the capnometry signal and then the breathing signal. Um, I'll just say one thing about, yeah, this, this function here, this this combo box, it's it off it offers you the the ability to sort of filter out blips in your data. So let's let's say that you had a one of your breaths was very quick because you sniffed or something like that. Um, you would get a you would get a very high peak on an otherwise sort of stable display, or, that, or at least that's possible. Now you might want to have you might not want to have that, so you can filter it out using this control. It's basically saying that anything above this breathing rate is excluded from the report. So that's what it's all about. So for now, I'm just going to um, select, go with the defaults, uh, click OK. And next, the report itself opens up. And again, it's created as an HTML report. You can see that on the file name there, HTML. So it opens in your web browser, your default web browser. So my web browser is Google Chrome, and this is a report. So it's it's still, again, I've said this before, but it's still a file on your commu computer. It's not on the internet, even though it's using the internet browser. So what have we got in the report? We've got two graphs, one showing the progression in the end tidal or the peak carbon dioxide. Yeah, so this is the height of the peak in the in the uh, in the software display that we saw. Um, second chart is for breathing rate, and then we've got a table summarizing the data. And that's the session report. Now I'm going to close that. I'll just mention you can also create an application report. This is relevant when you've run several sessions and you want to see if there's been any progress over time. Basically, it will create charts with one data point per session. Now, as I haven't got enough data, I'm not going to show that now. I'm going to talk about that in much more detail in the next module on HRV, where I've got some real data that I can show you.